Hey, it's Brad with the latest edition of Space News, focusing a bit on getting things into space. And we have to focus on an amazing story, and that is a company caught a rocket with a helicopter. Yes, there was a helicopter that retrieved a rocket as it came back to Earth after launching satellites. So Rocket Labs had this new advancement of trying to make their rocket reusable. Now, you may be familiar with SpaceX, where it launches a rocket, and as the satellite is deployed, that big booster comes back down, uses a little bit of thrusters, and lands. Well, Rocket Labs have thought, this is a great idea, but we maybe have a simpler, clear idea. Now, Rocket Labs can do this because their rockets are a bit smaller. Now, smaller isn't a bad thing here. Smaller means that they can fly more often and still take a bunch of small satellites. And this is a big focus in Australia and the world now, small satellites. So it's kind of like an airplane. You would take a, a big Boeing 747 or something to go across the continent or the ocean, but it may fly every once a day. To go to a nearby city, you may fly a few times a day on a smaller airplane. So a smaller rocket can go up more often and take more small satellites. But what they want to do here is to make this rocket reusable. So instead of building extra equipment into the rocket, they said, why don't we just catch it? Kind of simple on paper, but this is combining rocket science and helicopter flying and catching mid-air. So the rocket goes up, deploys the satellites, and then as the rocket comes down, a giant parachute is released, and then a big old Zikorsky helicopter comes in, attaches to the top of the parachute of the rocket, and then safely carries it back down to Earth. By doing so, they can then reuse the rocket and then make it cheaper. So instead of building a new rocket every time, you have one rocket that is used multiple times, thereby bringing down the cost and therefore making it even cheaper to send these small satellites into space. Now, they did this. Just a few days ago, a helicopter caught a rocket booster. Now, this was only the first trial. They didn't actually bring it all the way down. In fact, they caught it and then decided to still release it because they weren't quite happy with the full mechanism and the full catching, but that's okay. They still made a big step into making this very unique rocket reusable in a very unique way. If you had in your bingo space cards five years ago, catching a rocket with a helicopter, it wasn't on my list, but they did it. And for our second story, we're gonna focus on Boeing. Not because of airplanes, but because they're aiming to become the second company to take humans to the International Space Station. Now, the Boeing Starliner has actually tried this twice already. Not humans, but a, an uncrewed test. But they had some problems along the way, so they're hoping on the 19th of May, so it, coming up shortly, third time's a charm for them. So, the Boeing Starliner, kind of like the Boeing Dreamliner, but Starliner going to the stars, uh, is a, a U.S. company aiming to doing commercial crewed flights to the International Space Station. NASA awarded Boeing and SpaceX contracts to develop capsules to go into space. Now, SpaceX has already had four missions that have gone up. We just talked about recently and seen Crew 4 go up. But Starliner has tried this twice. Again, no people yet, and had some problems. The first time, they got into orbit, but a computer malfunction and glitch meant that they didn't actually reach their orbit. Uh, they didn't reach the perfect spot to join with the International Space Station, and therefore never quite made it. Now, they thought they fixed it, and they did, after fixing tens of other problems. But on the second go, about nine months ago, in August, they had a valve problem. Essentially, they tried to fill up the capsule and the rocket, get it ready to go. They never even launched at that time. So it was back to the proverbial rocket shop to go and fix it. Now they spent the past eight months fixing this problem and Boeing and NASA both say, yep, we think it's fixed. So they say, let's give it a go. So on the 19th of May, we're gonna see Boeing hopefully become the second company to go to the International Space Station with the aim of taking people. And if that test works perfectly, then they'll stick a human on it uh, and do what is hopefully their first human flight test later this year. And for our final story, talking about China's ambitious plans of building up their own space program and space station. So over the past few months, uh, the Tianhe Space Station, which is forming the bigger complex of the Tiangong Space Station, uh, has been in the works. 
Now, China had just completed their first six-month crewed mission, which is really exciting. This is exactly what the Americans and Russians and Europeans do, but they want more. They want to build their space station by adding two more modules to get it bigger, because the more modules you have, the more science you can do. And they plan to launch the next module in July and have six more missions in total to complete this space station. So the cool thing is we won't just have the International Space Station up there doing experiments and science. We'll also have the Chinese, the full Tiangong Space Station up there doing amazing science and research. And it's not also just going to be for China. Uh, China is already planning on working with other countries, inviting other researchers and scientists and astronauts from other countries to go and participate in their project. And it's not even just about the space station itself. They have other ambitious plans. They want to use it much like the International Space Station is being used. It's kind of a, a hub. So China is already building on their own space telescope, which will be complementary to the Hubble Space Telescope. So instead of looking at a very small patch of sky, it want to look, uh, look a little bit more shallower, but a larger patch of sky. So this will be quite complementary to all of the other research that can be done, and it'll be open to everyone. And so this is kind of the amazing thing that we, we get to see is the more countries that are participating in space research, the more we can do. In fact, China has also recently announced their plans to also test the direction, redirection of an asteroid. So similar to NASA's DART mission, they want to see can they deflect in a similar but different style a potentially hazardous asteroid? So again, once again, we're seeing that the development of space, both in cost and the amount of countries that are doing it, means we're going to get to do a lot more research, a lot more science, and a lot more knowledge. It's a really awesome time to be focused on it, and it's super exciting to follow the new developments at the Chinese National Space Agency. I hope you liked this edition of Space News with Dr. Brad Tucker. Make sure to like and subscribe so you can help me make some more YouTube videos and we can all enjoy space.